is going on guys it's your boy Cecil here brings a video here today bring guys a Photoshop slash after effects tutorial how to create your own really cool animated stream graphics now we're gonna be using a really cool free plugin from uh, video copilot and it's it's called Sabre, I believe and you guys can just I'll leave a link in the description I'll leave a link in the description down below for you guys to go ahead and download it um it's just a really cool plugin and it just kind of like all right, I'm going to show you guys. You've probably already seen the beginning of the video, of course, right? However, you can see this is my current starting screen screen that I use on my stream. It's there's nothing wrong with it. It's pretty. It has nice colors and whatnot. Um, it's a little outdated personally for my uh being, but I just didn't. You know, I'm working on revamping very soon. Um, with more or less this kind of production quality that I'm going with for today's video, that I'm going to show you guys. So if you're a streamer or if you're a graphic designer, you're just trying to get your design assets up, or if you're a streamer, you're trying to get your production quality up. Um, this is definitely a really cool way to do it because the plugin is free, and you can always just you know access a free for, uh free trial for. After Effects and plugins do work on free trial, so there's that. Um, so yeah, this is the starting. Like, this is the starting screen, like stagnant or static screen. However, this is the uh, the new sort of like look. It's very very easy to do this plugin. Um, it just it's just like a night and day difference personally when it comes to production. Uh, it just I mean this right here would look super super cool. Um, one thing as well is that you have it have to have it on loop. Otherwise, it's gonna be a little bit awkward if you don't have it on loop. This is what happens. I believe the original clip is about eight seconds long. <laughs> so if I don't have it on loop, it's just going to go black screen right after it finishes. So make sure you guys do have it on loop. That way it will keep just looping for you guys. And you just don't have to really worry about it until you, of course, switch your scene back to whatever you want to go ahead and do. So this is a very, very cool thing to do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Two likes on the video equals a secret down below. So do not forget if you guys, just, you know, sometimes you guys are great at it. Sometimes you just don't even leave a like. But I get it. I love you guys so much anyway. So let's go and get this thing going. We're going to start off with the backlit sort of uh, background to the actual text that's going to be holding this. So it's a very nice, simple, clean background. But I'm going to hop in in Photoshop. We're already in Photoshop. But I'm going to hop in to the next clip so I can, you know, make sure I get this thing going right. And uh, yeah, you can see you guys in a second. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're, of course, already in Photoshop, so let's go ahead and I'll show you guys how I did this. So I went with a more very simple, sort of, like, very nice, uh, clean approach to it. Nothing crazy going on. It doesn't mean that you can't do anything crazy going on in your background, but for me, I just wanted to kind of focus the text or just focus the effect itself to be what's kind of, like, being, like, seen a lot. Um, so let's go ahead and just show you guys how I did this. So first things first is I did use a gradient. I use a very, very cool gradient. We're going to go ahead and just go to gradient map here. And I believe the gradient I use will be right here. And actually, let's just use an actual, uh, let's use a gradient map and not that. Let me see something. Hold on. Gradient map. And uh, the reason why I'm using this is so I can change the actual angle a little bit cooler and a little bit better. So let's go ahead and now click on our little gradient here. So, okay, let me show you guys. So the first, uh, I guess, shadow to highlight ratio would be this really nice, cool, like very dark bl uh, blue almost. So it's definitely blue. It's, it's basically blue, but of course it has that black, very darkness to it. So this hex code is 080. 80B, that's the first one. And then for the highlight section, we're probably gonna be flipping it in a second anyway, but regardless, each other side. Um, this hex code would be 081D24. It's just more or less like a nice sort of a corresponding. It's almost getting to that greenish blue tone, but um, it just kind of, of course, it's still blue, but it's nice, more dulled out blue. And the reason why I didn't go with like a green, like a blue green, just because I wanted to make sure that I wanted to just be nice and even and not too like crazy about it. Cause I already have, if I just show you guys the, uh, the finished product really quick, I already had more or less green highlights being casted around the entire thing and not actually using blue and green. Cause I didn't want to make it too like Mitch match and just sort of, you know, very obviously patchy of colors. So I want to make sure I kind of get that out of there. So. <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and just change this angle i like the dark side over on the right hand side so i'm gonna change my angle just doing like this just like so and then once i've done that that's pretty much gonna be our background to start off this really cool background so what's gonna happen here is we're gonna be doing this really cool thing called i like to call it the aurora effect um essentially it's just me doing this really cool sort of lighting almost streak kind of effect it's just really very very simple to do actually so the one thing i did was i made a new layer of course because we're gonna be putting on a new layer and we're going to be using a rectangle just like so the rectangle marquee tool you can just use by just simply going over here clicking the rectangle click and drag and just basically fill your entire canvas by the way let me just say this now before anyone just starts yo what's the canvas size it's 1920 by 1080p so if you guys just go to 1920 1080 and then basically the resolution i have on 300 i believe anything above 150 or 175 is perfectly fine anyway however i just like to have it on 300 because why the heck not <laughs> um and then you create it and that's going to be your basically your project file as well when you go into illustrator so keep that in mind it's just basically a nice 1080p resolution screen um <clears throat> so on this rectangle here we're going to be basically pressing right click 
transform selection that way i can kind of give it a nice rotation here i'm holding shift that way you can see on my right hand side or right above my mouse you see how it says 15 um four or 30 and then 45 basically if you hold shift it keeps it in a nice uh simple 15 intervals while you're actually rotating it so you don't have to actually guess or anything like that that way you have a nice very cool just diagonal line a nice 45 degree angle that's what we want so i'm gonna take my brush here let's go ahead and take this brush let's go ahead and make the hardness uh zero and then we're gonna give it a nice brush size we're just gonna take a very simple uh, i'll just make it white for now because we can change the color afterwards so i'm gonna, I'm gonna make me uh change my diameter amount diameter amount to about 150 and i'm just gonna try to find out where like i don't want to click here and have this big streak do not click anywhere near sort of the actual your your circle your actual mouse circle for the actual brush should be nowhere i would say not even maybe like i would say like maybe an inch or no that's probably like a centimeter like half a centimeter almost like actually you know outside of the box that way you kind of have more like this you don't have like this kind of harsh glow because you definitely don't want that it looks kind of very tacky and awkward and you also don't want to see like you can actually see like a uh, I guess a circle streak, right? You just want it to be a nice little cool little like light aurora. I, I like that's how I like to call it, right? So I'm gonna say this again, maybe like just right outside of the box here, just right outside, and just make sure I hold Shift and click once again just outside. So it's gonna be a nice, very cool streak. So if I press Control D to then deselect, you guys can see that it just gives me a nice, very cool like aurora streak. So if I want to show you guys this again. Um, we're basically, be repeating this over and over and over again, and then taking your eraser and kind of erasing it. So now let's go ahead and make sure we actually get the same green, um, or at least close to the same green for the sake of the video. It's somewhere around here, I would say. Um, I kind of like put this up a little bit more, and then I'm gonna just give you guys this hex code. I don't know the code scheme on your sort of, uh, you know, even your background of the gradient really is all up to you. Um, but I went with a really nice, cool green and blue complementary color, like, um, color scheme. So, this is, like, a nice, cool, like, a neon greenish color. So, this is the hex code 3EF7B4. So, you guys put that in your color picker. You guys will get the same exact color that I'm using currently. And so, let's go ahead and do this. Let's just go ahead and hold Alt and Shift. And then we're just going to go ahead. And also, did I actually end up doing a bigger? No, I kept it right there. Okay, I see. Um, let's just say right here. I kind of wish I made it a little bit longer, but for the sake of the video, it's fine. I'll just use the actual background that I actually had before. Um, and then right there, what I mean by a little bit longer is I wish I made the streak a little longer. So I didn't have to actually, like, if I were to try to move it down, you see I have this cut here. That's something that's, like, almost like an imperfection. It's not something you want to have. Um, so, I mean, actually, I can just go back really quickly. Why the hell not? Let's just go ahead and try to get that same green again. At least somewhere around where it was before. And I'll go ahead and I'll go back into it and just make sure I make it a little bit more longer. Right? There's no there's no harm in actually doing it over. Why the heck not? It's not too far back. So, there we go. A little bit longer. And now I can actually do this without actually feeling like I'm hurting myself when it comes to uh, making sure I have it kind of filling the screen. So, Alt and Shift, just kind of moving it around. And uh, right about there, I'll just go ahead and move this one over. Uh, that's fine. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and just group it together by holding Control G, making sure all the layers are selected on the right-hand side. Moving it down, Alt Shift, moving it down, and I'm going to flip it horizontal and vertical. And you have something like this. Right? And then essentially this part here would just be coming in. I would probably make it a little more uniform, but this is pretty much fine. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to control click on both of these groups here together, group those two groups together. And I'm going to make a nice duplicate group of this actual group that I have here, just so that if I ever need to go back and like fix things or I made a place, I might have, I might have misplaced something and I want to go back and fix it without actually like having to do it all over again. Make sure you guys make backups. So that's what I'm going to do right here. That's my backup. And I'm going to merge this layer together just like so. That way now I can take my nice soft brush eraser and give myself some just, I guess I would call it uh like almost like a little depth play around like we're just gonna take this and bring it all the way down here let's take this and put it like halfway let's take this one and put it like up here and it's just really just trying to make it more uh i guess randomized right because we just had it all the same sort of lengths uh, you already saw me before previously putting a little more uh i guess like space in between um height wise right um so i think that's pretty fine that looks pretty good so lastly i believe what we're gonna be doing here is just want to take a duplicate of this actual um sort of entire streaks here we're gonna do we're just gonna simply go ahead and move them right about here i'll say like right about here essentially what i'm gonna be doing let me, let me show you guys what the actual let's do this 
that we can actually see the exact where the actual uh, rectangle is moving to. Okay, I deleted the wrong one. No, it's this right here. There we go. So I'm just going to be moving this down towards the right, just like so. Right? You can see how that works. So I'm just going to be taking the control U option, which is going to bring up the hue and saturation. So you press control U while you're selected on a layer. It brings up the hue and saturation that's only targeted towards that layer. I'm going to simply take my lightness, drop this all the way down to negative 100. It's going to make it black for us, right? Press OK. And then on this layer, use your brush again, your eraser. And then just erase it so you see how these uh, have these you have these weird, awkward, odd, like, um, cutoffs, which is basically happening because you had the canvas before and you didn't see that previously. You want to make sure you get rid of that because it's kind of like a quality thing. You don't, you know, you definitely don't want to have that, right? So we're going to go ahead, get rid of that just like this. And then let's go up here, bring some of these up here. And I'll say like, that's pretty good. Um, we're missing a little bit over here. So what I can might be do is just maybe make another duplicate and then just erase where I don't want other stuff, right? And I'll have one like maybe in the middle. So let's put one over there as well and just erase the other stuff. Right, you can see how that works. You just want to basically fill that space to get this really cool um, end look that kind of looks like there's light just like leaking out of this really cool simple background. So for me, this is where I would stop at for you guys. And if you guys want to, if you want to find a really cool color scheme, um, I already have this color scheme from previously, but maybe let's just see what happens when we go ahead and use the color balance option. And you just want to move things around. You might find a color scheme that you might want to use um, when it comes to uh, After Effects and want to do your actual lighting and stuff. So. Uh, I, I don't know, it doesn't look crazy good like this, but it might give you an idea, who the heck knows, if you use a different kind of hue saturation, or excuse me, hue or uh, uh, vibrance when it comes to your um, colors, but regardless, it didn't work too well for me, but maybe it'll work for you, so I would try that out most definitely, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. What I would do is I would go to File, Export, Save for Web Option, you want to change this to PNG24, and then you just want to save it as so. That's probably the best way to actually export a, um, anything, really, anything at all when it comes to uh, picture quality. So make sure you guys use <clears throat> PNG24, not JPEG. I promise you it's better if you use PNG24. And you just save it. And then once we're going to save it, we're going to drop it into After Effects. And then I'll meet you guys over there. So let's just go ahead and do this now. I need water. That's the thing. All right, homie, so we're actually inside After Effects, all good to go. So this is actually the one that I use or the comp that I use personally to create what you guys saw in the beginning of the video here today. So you can see all these other solids right here are actually just the actual saber effect used so that can have these really cool little streaks that sort of have more motion going on around it. So it's not just so boring and obvious that motion is only going on in the middle. It just feels very awkward if I did so. And then, of course, you can start to see the starting the soon part here looks really, really cool. It's almost like an effect that's you're kind of like filling up water in a cup kind of thing. It's, it's basically the end offset and kind of like how to say that is the way to put it is probably like just imagine the word is kind of like filling itself in almost with the offset. I'm saying the plugin itself is doing all the work when it comes to this stuff here. Very simple way to animate this. It's not hard whatsoever. You guys will learn how to do it in today's video, hopefully. And I would very much so advise you guys because I'm not be using a lot of the settings that the person video copilot who created this actually really cool program plugin, excuse me. Uh, he did definitely a way more in depth view of all the settings. I'm more or less going to be using maybe like four or five and then giving you guys some tips on how to make it look somewhere close to what I have going on here because that's all that's what I know how to do. That's what I learned in today's video. So make sure you guys know. So I'm not a pro at After Effects, but I can definitely tell you guys that I like to just kind of show you guys where I'm at in the process of just learning different programs, learning how to how to just give my design assets a better advantage. So or a better learning experience. Why the heck not? Anyway, let's just go ahead and make a new composition new composition we're gonna be going with 1920 by 1080 we use 60 frames per second for this you can use 30 i believe i don't know if i really would see too much of a difference um maybe if you have that cinematic versus uh just smooth feel whatever works for you i'm just gonna be using 60 for today's video because i did i did that before um let me also rename this i don't know why i went with composition settings let's just name it tutorial okay so first things first we're gonna drag in our untitled png which is actually basically our uh how do you call it? The um, English is a hard language. The Photoshop image that we use. We're just going to lock the layer because we're not really doing anything with this layer whatsoever. And we're just going to go ahead and go ahead and file. So me, not file new, but new text. That's the first thing I'm going to be doing in today's video. So let's go ahead and just put in the word they're going to be using, which is going to be starting for me. This can be be right back for you. This could be um, this could be anything for you, honestly. So just whatever word you want to have or whatever 
um, panel screen or whatever screen that you want to have the the word say maybe you want to have it your name who the heck knows maybe it's gonna be your logo who the heck knows it is all doable though so just be that just know that as that as a thing I'm gonna make this a little more bigger put that right in the middle just like so turn off my grid here <clears throat> I'd say this is a pretty good start. So I did use Gotham Narrow. I just changed my settings or changed my width, um, my size of my text by holding shift, clicking on a corner, making it bigger, turning on the grid, figuring out where the middle is. Because if I use snap to, uh, where is it? Transform. If I use snap to center in view, it would usually do it in the view. For some reason, it's the, the text here is on the bottom left and I don't know how to move this right here. So if anyone wants to help me, I don't know how to move that. But you can also do that if you have like a logo, which would probably be a lot more easier to just snap it right in the middle by just doing the right click transform. Um, center in view, which is control plus home for your actual shortcut. So once you have this, the save effect could be, I believe, put onto a text where you actually change it yourself, but that's not the way I learned it. I personally learned it as my text. Once I made sure I spelled it right and all that good stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this actual, uh, the, the files over here on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, excuse me, the project text here and make sure I just changed my text into a mask. So create mask from text, just like so. It makes it white. All good to go basically what's going to happen here is there's going to be more or less individual sort of uh it's going to be more of like a mask basically right there's going to like be like almost an ai file almost right so i'm going to go ahead and go to the effects which is right here type in the word saber i already did so so just really quickly just drag the effect right over here just like so you can see that the 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 the, the word starting kind of went away right i also wanted to make sure the reason why i stood it right there is I'm, i was making sure i spelled it a little right i've been doing too many spelling mistakes um so anyway right you want to have the saber effect here it's, it's going to start off always as basically like this really cool simple light um what is it called like a light streak just like so but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into well, i believe it's customized core core type change it from saber to um layer mask just like so so that way you can see that the actual layer mask the actual effect itself gets masked onto the little ai sort of masking of the word starting that we had right very very simple way to go for it and you can see right away it's going to be very very sort of uh, all the things are going to be a little bit too much for the actual text so first things first i'll mess around with the core size well actually first things first i'll probably mess around with the preset we're probably going to use electric this time uh, this is one I use personally in the actual uh, in the actual starting soon presentation view. Um, you can use really anything you guys want. Like if I flip through some of these, they're like ridiculously cool. Um, you can see different ones have different noise types. This one's a burning one, very very cool. Um, there's just so so many, and I advise you guys to really go through these. I didn't even go through these myself, so I'm gonna while I'm saying go through these, I'm gonna go through these a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Um, but there are what the heck is that jesus you can see there's some really 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 cool ones i still would advise you guys to make sure you guys check out the actual um, tutorial that i'm going to be having linked in the description down below um for you guys so anyway we're going to be using electric for this one and i'm going to change my core size immediately which basically the core size is i can give you guys some insight on it right uh oops don't want to move that where did, where did you go where did it go okay um, the course has to basically be the actual, I guess, source light to this or the or the thickness of your stroke, if you think about it like that. So the core size, if I, if I, if I just put this up to like three or so, you can see what's going to happen here is it gets way too much. If I lower this down for a second, you can see the core size just gets a little bit too thick. Uh, let's just put this at 55 again. And here's the core size for me personally on the uh, electric preset 0.5 looks super, super nice to me. And let's just change the spread a little bit to like mm, actually 0.1 was perfectly fine. Let's change the the intensity on the glow though to a to a nice high 80 number that way you can have that really really cool electric feel to it and it looks pretty good um so personally me i'm gonna be having multiple uh colors i'm gonna be having multiple colors the way i'm gonna actually do that is i'm gonna be copying and pasting the actual same text that we're working with here so i'm not gonna quite sure like animate this right now um so let's go ahead and just actually let's just do a little bit of, of the of I guess a little bit of animation. So very simply, the one I'm going to be using a lot, or the in this case, the one we're going to be using in today's video is end offset, which is right here, which is basically doing that thing I was talking about before, like the filling up the cup thing with the cup with the with the soon part coming in right here. Let me just show you guys right. This the soon is basically me changing the end offset. You see how that works? Um, so if I go back to my actual tutorial composition, and if I just change the offset, you'll see what happens here it almost fills it up you guys see how that works it's very very cool and that's how i actually did the soon part so if i animate this from zero to a hundred that's basically how it happens so not end size what i was wondering why it didn't happen and offset if i put that to zero right if i just show you guys really quick let's just put this keyframe this 
zero. Let's go to like three seconds, change it to a hundred. And through that time frame, you'll see that it fills in. So that's how I did the soon part. That's that's very, very simple. You see how very, very simple that is? Very simple keyframes. Let's just go ahead and just turn that off for, or delete that. So press U to bring up the keyframes on the actual layer. It's very simple to do. And uh, where did you go again? Why does it always do that? Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, let's just change this a little bit. I'm going to turn the offset on again. Let's just put this on to maybe about mm, like 80. So we have like about that or maybe a little more like 75 about 75 i think it's pretty good because i still want to see the word starting i'm going to use this actual first one to actually be able to see all of the actual text so i would say maybe even like 77 just so that a little more of the t there we go a little more of the t can be in there so i think that's pretty dang good um so there's also a really cool thing called um where is it at glow settings just no flicker it's flicker so if you guys know if you guys can't tell just so there's these little cool little flickers if you guys were to put this up to like 15 or so flicker intensity it's kind of like almost kind of like these little uh almost think about it of brush hits going in and out so think about it like that i definitely put some of those in here so i'm gonna put this about maybe like 20 percent intensity and let's just say flicker speed at like 25 that way when you're going through you can't quite see it too much if i like almost like uh render preview it or whatnot but I don't know what is uh, After Effects in this in the uh, sense of uh, like how the render and stuff goes. I'm actually not entirely sure, but uh, oops, you can see it a little bit, not too much though. It's not too much any. It's not too high anyway. Anyway, regardless, that's what I would basically uh, mess around and flirt around with. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this one right here again really quickly though, so I can actually get those two colors in here a little bit, so I can see what I want to do. So. Uh, basically what's gonna be happening you can't really tell uh, actually before I do that let me be sure to actually show you guys how to actually turn on um, basically an overlay because you want to make sure you guys just see your background right um, if you guys don't have your mode enabled this little on the bottom left these little tabs here expand or collapse um, you definitely want to have the second one uh, on basically right so you guys just see the mode turn this on simply just put this on add and you guys will see that it now is on the background here you can see it now in your background looks super super nice super clean the the blue definitely works it's okay and uh, secondly, I'm going to turn this one on again now so I can actually show you guys the different color. The green. And we're going to go ahead and just turn on this on add as well so I can see it over this one. But we're going to take this offset here and we're going to change this to... Let's turn off this for a second. Let's just change it to like 55. And let's also change it from electric to energize. Oh, that looks pretty freaking sexy. Okay, let's put this to green again. Um, right about here. Is that pretty good? Okay, green. So let's go ahead and just lower the core size first. Let's go to the core size about like to like one. I would say one would probably be really good. Let's turn off or turn this. And let's go with the start offset. Or the end offset. Where's the end size? There we go. Kind of make sure I don't want to have it overlaying too much, like how you see it right now. Uh, let's just turn that back to 100. Let's go back into this one uh, actually, and just turn this to like 50. There we go, and let's go back into the green one and turn the end offset to about like 95. There we go. That's about right. I just want to be able to see multiple colors and not have them overlaid over each other the entire time because that's a little bit of an awkward situation there. So you can see this looks a lot better. You can see definitely two uh, two separate colors. So for my blue one or for my green one, excuse me, I have it on. Where is it at? Excuse me. And offset at 95. So that's the one thing I did change. So I can change basically the the separation. I want to make sure I have those two separate colors. So I did change my end offset to 95 core size to one in the green whichever color you choose to be but one on one's going to be that um those settings and for the blue i have my end offset at 50 and then my core size at 0.50 and then of course this is the blue one on electric preset this one is on the energized preset so that looks pretty dang good so what's happening here is the effect itself is really honestly already done i'm not even gonna lie to you about that it's basically gonna be animating itself i kind of like a little bit render preview here but i know my render preview is so so bad but you can see it's already animating itself all the the electric sort of uh currency currency current not currency current period current what is there a word let's not break my brain um you guys can see it's already animating itself so essentially this is almost already done 
So in a way, if you guys want to say, let's just go ahead and like really quickly now kind of look at it more. You see how that's kind of working out there? So if you guys want to, one thing I'd probably like mess around with is the, the definitely the spread. Um, it looks a little bit too much like this right here the bias or whatever how you say it, it's like 0.3 probably look a little bit better so it's not so much going on there and the noise by the way the noise in the background these little like almost like this the smoke in the background you actually could change that as well i'll probably do so and that would be located uh distortion no let's go where is it i'm getting lost i am lost in the settings wasn't it there where is it? I know I can find this. Give me, give me two more seconds. I'll find it. Can't find it. <laughs> Isn't it in here? It's definitely in here. Glow. There we go. Noise. Okay. So I had to take a little longer, but you can see if I take my aspect ratio and throw this to like, I don't know, let's just say like 0.3 almost. You'll see that it gets more like very motion blurry and if i just change the blue one as well you can see it a little bit better probably what's going on here now can i find it faster it's on glow settings um distortion glow distortion and then aspect let's just change it to about 0.3 again you'll see what happens here so you see how that looks right it almost gives it more of like a motion kind of feel um i would say whatever i would say that's okay though putting it on one i just think that's something you probably want to work around with too to make it more kind of like you um but it says pretty dang good. You can change a random seed. I probably change this as well, just so you don't have the same exact thing going on for your entire thing. So now we have a different sort of seed when it comes to the motion. What's going on here? So if you use maybe energize twice, this is this more thinner one. So that way you don't have the same exact sort of glow or wind speed. You can probably change your wind speed a little bit. There's a lot that goes on here, but I can't entirely show you it um, as perfect as the way that Video Copilot did, because this is, whatever his computer is, it renders like a god. Um, I have a new computer, but I don't have the exact things for more or less on the uh, editing side. So that would be not, unfortunately, what's not what I have currently, but Hey, whatever here, this is pretty much how I did the starting, um, word here. But for me, I did more have like a, I had more like a, uh, a very skinny approach to it or skinny strokes to it. But just to show you guys the, the, the velocity or the, the, the presence that this shows, this looks pretty cool. So for the actual other part where we're going to do these little, little, uh, almost like little streaks is how we did this. So just pressing new solid. That was like the most awkward transition ever, but basically we're going to be making, uh, these things right here, right on the outsides. So we can have those moving as well. So it's not just the inside moving. Um, cause of the, the soon part here, the way I did that was just simply doing exactly what I did for the starting, but essentially taking one of these and making them black. So you can see that there we go. It, get, it looks more gray. That looks pretty cool as well, but that's how I did the soon part. Very simple. I promise you'll be able to figure it out very easily if you at least follow the tutorial somewhat. Um, let's go into FX. Drag the saber onto our nice solid, and we're going to immediately go ahead and just turn this on add. And we're going to also immediately turn this on energy or electric. Let's go to electric, right? We're going to take this. You see these little key points or a little... Uh, uh, what, what would be like the the legitimate word to use inside After Effects, like keyframes or uh, motion frames or target um, target points, something like that. Um, let's just change our core size here to like point three. Um, that's fine. Let's just turn this up then. Let's just say right about there. It's pretty okay. Uh, what about even point two? Okay, let's do 0.4. There we go. That's fine. So essentially, this is like how it's going to be happening. We're going to be duplicating this a couple times. So one thing for sure is <clears throat> that was a voice crack is change your distortion glow, maybe even your core distortion. Make sure you actually have a random seed on these. That way you don't have the same exact um, if you use at least the same exact thing, which I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using electric for uh, all the the surrounding things here. Make sure you just change the seed around a little bit. So when you, of course, control C, control V move it around so to move this one around once you control c and control v click back on the saber click back on these motion points and then just move them to where you want to move them to so i'm going to move this one right down here i'm going to go into the seed change it around um change it around here as well if you want you can animate the offset so that it kind of like does what i did before for the 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 soon part under uh starting so if i were to go to uh let's go ahead and just lower all these because we don't need all these here customize core 
start offset or end offset you can have one be like coming in and just doing something like this like shooting out almost like electricity so if you have one at zero it won't be there so if i were to quickly try to show you guys how to animate it if we just have it on zero frames so at the start we're going to have this keyframed at zero offset and at let's just say 2.3 seconds or whatever or two and a half seconds we're going to have the offset be at 100 so what's going to happen here is let's go ahead oh, i keep doing that let's go ahead is there a way to turn off there was a way to turn that off how did i do that where is like the uh, mm, so I don't actually have to see this wasn't there a way to do that I forgot how to do it okay whatever anyway essentially you can see what happens here is it's gonna start coming in nice and slow or however fast you want it to come in or whatnot uh there we go you start to see how it's coming in so just it's a very cool little almost like a, an electric animation i would say i'd probably really if i was going to do this over again in my composition number one i'd probably change those around so that i can actually have it a little more more like shooting and coming in and coming out i think that would look a lot better honestly so i just give you guys another idea so essentially that's pretty much it honestly you can change the colors as well by just clicking over here clicking this little mark right here and make sure i click on the green just make it a little more vibrant as always. So you have a blue one, you have a green one, and you just sort of split them apart. I would definitely not put it on top of the actual little Aurora stuff. Put it more or less where the shadows are. So that way it just looks a lot better. And you have that nice little kind of like cohesive room and just making it look just really, really nice, cool composition. And basically, that's it for today's tutorial here today. I know I didn't do too much. I promise I didn't I didn't explore the Saber effect or the Saber plugin very much, but for what I explored, I got a really, really cool, I'm personally satisfied with it, and a really cool little effect. Like I said, I'm probably gonna go ahead and re-render it so I actually have it kind of shooting like I said before. One thing to be certain of though, if you have something changing with the offset, let's go back in here for a second. Um, if you have something changing with the offset, so, um, let's just say for whatever reason for the blue or no, let's just say the green Which is this one right here the energized one. Let's just say for whatever reason if you have your offset start at um, like 50 right for the green at three and a half seconds you have it at a hundred Right, so it's gonna like basically fill in again So if you have this going on right if you have that sort of like look where it's gonna be, you know kind of coming in make sure Excuse me if you have like an eight second composition like I do, make sure you press U on your keyboard when you click on that. So if you ever do anything with the offset or anything with keyframe, if you press U on a layer, it'll bring up those keyframes. So essentially, <clears throat> what you wanna make sure you do is, so essentially you have this keyframe here, which is the offset being at zero, this keyframe here being an offset of being at 100. Being sure that you don't actually jump when it comes to uh, looping it inside uh, the, what do you call it? side stream labs you want you don't want it to jump basically right so if i have this here if i if i have this at zero right or i have it on 50 make sure you control c right that keyframe go to you know basically the end of the keyframe or the end of your composition which is eight seconds or whatever control v so you can actually copy and paste that um you know that uh intensity or not intensity the offset so what's going to happen here is it's going to basically almost loop itself so if you have this at 50 it's going to go to 50 to 100 it fills in it's gonna go back to 50 but essentially besides jumping from 100 to 50 it's gonna basically now essentially go backwards and it won't look awkward you guys you know what I'm saying otherwise you're gonna see in your um, stream labs and you put it on loop it's gonna jump you don't want it to jump because that's a it's just gonna look too obvious it's gonna look a little bit awkward um you might have you might even have to change your settings when it comes to the streaks as well so if I you know make it go out I want to make sure it goes in as well so that when it loops it loops from when it was coming out um so i hope that makes a little bit of sense there's no real other way for me to explain it besides this is currently at 50 the offset which means it's going to be kind of filling in um outlining the actual thing so if i put this to 50 it's going to outline it to 100 as so right essentially if you had this being your end keyframe it would immediately jump back to here and then go through it again so it'd be like hey and jump you know what I mean? So to make sure it doesn't jump, make sure you actually make one of the end keyframes be um, where you originally started. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. I didn't try to make it as long as possible. I hope you guys just like kind of figure out the setting and just really have fun with it. Please be sure to check out the actual um, download link or excuse me, the actual tutorial I'm going to be posting because in that tutorial is a download link. Um, please be sure to watch that to kind of familiarize yourself a little bit more. However, for me, I believe the settings that I personally change around with and work with is pretty much good enough for personally me. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Hopefully it makes your stream look a little bit cooler. 
and or if you're not a person who's doing it for themselves or for a designer who's just looking to up their like i said design assets to make their their stream packages be a lot cooler a lot more production value just give them another reason to you know you know get the pricing that you personally want hopefully this is the tutorial for you thank you guys so very much for watching don't keep smiling stay positive and stay free from you guys um, don't, don't forget to like comment down any of the tutorials on this if you do. Don't forget to check out my self by selfie.com slash Um It's a, you know, all premiums and designs, those $5. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, that's it. I already said keep smiling and stay positive, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. What time is it? 10.30. Holy Or 12.30. 12.30. That's 12.30. Holy crap. I need to go to bed and render this. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. I'm, we'll see you guys.